Recording in progress. Good evening. My name is Jesse Brotherson. I'm the deputy clerk with the township. Uh, before we begin tonight's presentation, I would first like to share the township recognition statement. We recognize that the first Bureau of Canadian settlers arrived in what is now Crestlinch Township. The Anishinaabe ancestors of the Mississauga of the Credit First Nation had long established tent camps in the area. Through written and verbal accounts, we understand that the Anishinaabe interacted with the settlers in a friendly and cooperative man manner. And it is acknowledged that the, de the development of the township encroached upon their traditional way of life, resulting in their displacement. So tonight, we are excited to share with you information regarding the heritage designation process. Uh, due to recent legislative changes made by the province, municipal governments across Ontario are reviewing their listed non-designated properties. The township is seeking to provide property owners of non-designated properties on the township's heritage register with information regarding the designation process and to solicit feedback, engage property owner interest in having their property designated. In total, the township has 109 properties on its heritage register with non-designated status. So first, we'll just go over what we'll be discussing this evening. So we'll go over what is heritage. non-designated status. We'll review the responsibility of property owners whose properties have designated status. We'll look at a draft um, alteration and demolition process for designated properties, um, or the current process rather. And then we'll look at some examples of alterations to designated properties, and then we'll look at the next steps uh, for the heritage designation process. So heritage designation frequently asks questions. In addition to the information follow, staff have also created a heritage designation guide, which will be available to those who request it, which will provide more detailed information regarding the heritage designation process. So first, um, is your property designated or not designated? Currently, uh, there are no designated properties within the township and all properties that are currently on the uh, Township's Heritage Register have non-designated status. So what does non-designated status mean? Non-designated non status means that the property is listed on the Township's Register, register and has interim protection from demolition for a period of two years. During this time, uh, property owners are required to provide 60 days notice of their intention to demolish or remove a building or structure from their property. Properties with non-designated status have no restrictions on building permit applications. So what does it mean to have a designated property? Uh, properties with designated status are approved by council through a designation bylaw. When a property is designated, it protects the heritage features that are listed in that designation bylaw from demolition or alteration without first receiving approval through a heritage permit. Now, why is heritage designation so important? Heritage designation is an important tool to preserve our community's cultural and architectural heritage for future generations and to conserve identified heritage attributes and structures. Preserving these structures within our community makes it a unique. Slow down just a bit. So we can sure. Listen and read at the same time. Absolutely. Uh, it makes it a unique and interesting place to live, as well as uh, it can encourage local tourism within the township. So what does heritage, heritage designation not do? There are often misconceptions related to what heritage designation does and does not mean for a property. So a heritage designation does not impact zoning of a property. Therefore, all the same zoning uses and requirements remain in effect after the property is designated. Heritage designation does not limit the installation of modern features or impact the inside of the structure. Uh, so internal renovations or remodeling um, additions of an air conditioner, duct work, those kinds of things can take place. Um, a heritage designation does not require the property owner to restore any lost architectural elements. And most importantly, heritage designation does not prohibit the alteration or redevelopment of designated properties. It merely puts a process in place to protect those identified features within the designation bylaw. <coughs> So how are properties designated under the Heritage Act? Uh, first, a property is identified as a candidate for designation 
and then the property is researched and evaluated for its cultural and heritage significance. Once that research and evaluation has been completed, a report is brought to Township Council, at which Council may state an intention to designate, and then notice is given in accordance with Section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act. Following this, there's a 30-day objection period in which anyone may object to the designation to Council, and at the end of this period, and after considering, considering any objections, Council can either withdraw the notice of intention to designate, or they can proceed with passing a bylaw to designate the property. Um, following this, a copy of the bylaw and a notice of passing is then given to the property owner and anyone who made an objection, as well as the Ontario Heritage Trust. There is then a 30-day appeal period, and if no appeals are received during this time, the bylaw comes into full force and effect on the day following the last day of the appeal period. And then a copy of the bylaw is registered on title and sent to the Ontario Heritage Trust. So next we'll talk about the impacts of O23 on properties with non-designated status. Um, so as mentioned previously, Bill 23 has impacted a number of aspects of the Ontario Heritage Act, including the listing of properties with non-designated status on the Heritage Register. Any properties that were included on the Township's Heritage Register with non-designated non status on January 1st of 2023 will be delisted from the Heritage Register on January 1st, 2025, unless they are designated. Once a property is removed from the Heritage Register, it cannot be re-added for a period of five years. This has resulted in the loss of interim protection from demolition of culturally significant properties across the province. It's very important uh, for us to engage with property owners to get their feedback and interest in the designation process, as property owners' willingness to participate in this process will be integral. The township is not the only municipality going through this kind of process. As I mentioned previously, as a result of Bill 23, municipalities across Ontario are reviewing their heritage registers to, to try and preserve significant buildings across the province. <laughs> So what are the responsibilities of a property owner who has a property with designated, designated status? Um, there are four kind of main things. So first, when ownership changes on a designated property, the new owner must give notice to the clerk of the municipality within 30 days of becoming the owner. Second, relates to the alteration and renovation of heritage attributes. Property owners may not alter or renovate heritage attributes listed in the designation bylaw unless a heritage uh, permit has been issued. Um, issued. Uh, property owners may not demolish or remove heritage attributes listed in the designation bylaw unless they have permission to do so in writing to the council. And property owners must maintain identified heritage attributes as listed in the designation bylaw in compliance with the township's property standards bylaw. I will now hand over to Lisa. Good evening, my name is Lisa. I'm the Communications and Committee Coordinator for the Township. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, designation. The, in accordance with the Ontario Heritage Act, any alteration or renovation or a demolition that would be likely to affect the property's heritage attributes described in that designating bylaw uh, would require a heritage permit, uh, and it would also uh, require any other applicable township permits, uh, as you normally would see. So if it's a, a building that uh, is going to require a building permit, it's also going to require that building permit in addition to the heritage permit. So some examples of uh, 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 alterations may be replacing original doors, windows, some decorative elements, uh, verandas, porches, as Jesse noted, uh, it wouldn't require that anything that's already been removed be re-added back. It's simply protecting those uh, features that are already in place. So this is a, a draft version of our permit application process. So we'll just walk you through a little bit about how the process works. First, you would submit your application to staff. Staff will review the permit application to determine if there are any impacts to the heritage attributes that, that are listed in that designating bylaw. If the heritage attributes are not listed as a result of the work that you're looking to do, then the application will be screened out and the applicant would be able to proceed with their project without having to apply for any uh, for a heritage permit. Again, you may still have to apply for any of those other applicable permits. If the application did uh, impact the heritage attributes uh, listed in the designating bylaw, then it would be brought forward to the heritage committee 
uh, to receive comments, which would then be provided to uh, council for review uh, and uh, their consideration. At the uh, consideration stage, the council may approve the permit with uh, out conditions, with conditions, or they may uh, refuse the permit. So uh, without conditions, an approved permit then can proceed to the next stage, again, seeking those any additional permits if they are necessary, otherwise uh, proceeding uh, with their project. If they are approved with conditions, you can either proceed with your project, or if you don't agree with those conditions, you may file an appeal with the Ontario Land Tribunal. If council refuses your permit, you also have a right to appeal with the land tribunal. So we're going to talk a little bit about some designation and alteration examples. I'll note that these examples are uh, commercial spaces. I know a lot of people tonight probably have residential homes that you're um, thinking about potentially having designated. And just keep in mind that uh, because these are commercial spaces, the way that they've been altered or um, change is a little bit different than you might uh, decide to do, but um, you still think creatively about um, things that you could potentially do with your um, designated property. So the first example is the Deltas by Marriott London Armouries building. Uh, so this building uh, was built in 1905. Um, it was closed in 1976 and in 1988 was converted into a luxury hotel uh, with a 20 story tower added to the center of building. So that's that big tower um, in the center there. Next we have 135 Barrett Street in Ottawa. This is uh, the St. Charles Market. It was built in 1908 uh, as a Roman Catholic church. In 2010, it became vacant and was converted into a marketplace and restaurant space with an eight-story housing complex, so that's the housing complex here. And then the last one is a bit of a local example. This is the Idea Exchange in Cambridge. Uh, it was built between 1884 and 1887. Originally a post office and a home was uh, designated as a National Historic Site in 1983. And then in 2018 was uh, restored. Um, all of its exterior elements were restored. Um, and then the glass pavilion was added as well um, to create this, this space we have here today. So just acknowledging that we really understand that this is one of your biggest concerns, your ability to make these alterations. And we want to, you to understand that in terms of next steps, we, sorry, in terms of next steps, um, we are really looking to engage uh, with, uh, you, with you tonight. You were sent a letter uh, of interest to have your properties designated. Um, and uh, if you are interested in having your property designated, um, we're going to ask that at the end of this presentation, you can come and have a chat with uh, myself, Justine, or Courtney about um, that. And if you... Uh, uh, are not interested, uh, you'll be, have an opportunity to provide some feedback. We have a table set up um, with some papers and like to provide comments. Um, those members that are attending electronically, um, there is a link online at pleasantlunch.ca slash heritage comments for you to provide comments as well. Uh, I appreciate everyone's time tonight. Um, that concludes our presentation. Um, so as Lisa mentioned, uh, staff will be available following the presentation to answer questions for those attending in person. For those attending electronically, uh, you can send questions to admin at presidential.ca. Uh, we also have a phone number available that you can call and a comments you can file online. Thank you everyone for attending this evening. Hello. 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 Hello.